Good morning again to you all. It has been a long break from our narrated devotions. I do pray that the 40 days of journaling devotions brought blessing to you and that you learned more about yourself and your relationship with our Father God and with His Son Jesus Christ, as well as how you relate to His Holy Spirit as you meditated upon what was shared through the 40-day journey we all took together. I also pray that today's verse and the image contained in it will minister rest for your soul and encouragement to you to hold on to what is precious in the Lord. The verse for today's meditation is from Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16. This is what the Lord says, Stand at the crossroads and look, ask for the ancient paths, ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. This word was given to God's people through Jeremiah, the prophet of God, during a time when God's people were in a state of rebellion, apathy, and neglect regarding their relationship with God and their honor of the things and ways of God. Leading up to this word of direction from Jeremiah, he speaks out against Jerusalem by telling God's people what it is that will happen should they not right their ways and turn back to God to live in communion with him as they were designed to do. God warns of coming destruction to everything, even the beautiful cities, and that the destruction will come from unexpected places and from people who have been preparing for battle and attack. This will happen because of oppression, wickedness, violence and destruction, which have become a way of life amongst them. Jeremiah warns of God abandoning them and encourages them to prune away that which does not bear fruit and to glean that which remains and is good. Jeremiah then speaks out his frustration that no one will hear the word of God. People find no pleasure anymore in the word of God and are offended by the things and ways of God. He even points to those professing to be God's representatives and the falsehood in which they live. He shames them for their deceitful ways and for preaching with hypocrisy and not taking their call to heal and to bring peace seriously. He calls them out for having no shame for the falsehood of their ways and warns them that God will punish them. He speaks of feeling the wrath of God flowing through his own soul, and he knows that complete destruction and loss of everything is coming. It is now, after this warning of destruction and loss, that we have this brief word of salvation and relief. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. This is the way to divert and even prevent the punishment of God from being meted out. However, the sad thing is that after this verse, we are taken back to the stubborn rebellion of the people and their refusal to listen, and the resulting outcomes of God's anger against them for rejecting him and his ways. They were now at a crossroad, having to decide which direction they would take, and Jeremiah tells them which way to go. They should ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it and they will find rest for their souls. Consider the crossroads. I'm going to take you back again to the Kruger National Park or even to our very own Red Flag Nature Reserve. Both these are places that have many crossroads which call for a decision from the driver as to which direction they will take. Where will the animals or birds be found? Which road will do the least damage to our car? What types of animals will be found in one direction or the other? Will the birds we saw last time be there again this time? There are just so many things to take into consideration when deciding which route to take. This is similar to the decisions we need to make when considering the directions in which our lives will move and more especially our spiritual lives. It worries me when I hear folks saying things like, I will let my children decide for themselves. Or, I think it's important for children to be exposed to as many points of view as possible so that they can make informed decisions regarding their spiritual lives. These sentiments are all good and well, but my question is, to what extent do we make the predetermined effort to draw alongside them, to help them discover truth? Do we even know what it is they're being exposed to? Do we help them to filter through the information being passed on to them? Do we discuss these things with them? Do we ever present the truth of God's word to them in its purest form and have discussions about the word of God with them in relation to the information they are encountering? Or do we leave them 
in their vulnerability to sift through all the confusion on their own. Think now about the crossroad you are facing in your life at the moment. What decisions are you having to make? How are you going about making these decisions? It is much like this when we consider our walk with God. It is not as simple as just leaving it to be discovered somehow from the morass of confusing and contaminated information, ideologies and philosophies that are being spewed at society, accompanied by innuendos of rejection and scorn should you decide to stand firm on any structure of truth that defies the modern trends. Direction needs to be given, guidance needs to be presented and advice needs to be shared. God says, ask. Go to those who have been there before. Go to those who have travelled that road. Go to those who have more experience and knowledge of the area than you do. Go to those who have lived there. Go to those who work there and have devoted their lives to keeping the reserve for future generations. They know better than anyone else what can be found, where and when. Ask them for their advice. God says, ask those who have travelled ancient paths. Ask them for direction. Those who have walked God's paths are able to testify the truth of his word and promises and ways. They are, they are able to share their experiences and the reality of what the ways of God look like. They've seen the leopard and are able to tell you where to find it. This is why it is so important to share testimonies of God's work in our midst. We will never know when our testimony of experiencing God in our lives will be an answer to someone's questions, or whether it will bring clarity to someone's doubts, or whether it will bring guidance to someone who is seeking. It is a pointless exercise asking a carpenter to teach you about embroidery. You go to a carpenter to learn about carpentry and to a needlework crafter to learn about embroidery. Therefore, it would only make sense that we should go to those who have walked the ancient road with God to learn about the ways of God. What is the ancient path? The word ancient denotes a period of time that goes back way beyond recent memory. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verse 29, Jesus says, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus' life on earth has been recorded for all to read and discover in the Bible. It records the ancient paths, not only walked by Jesus, but by many more who lived and hoped for the coming Messiah, from the time of God's creation and even beyond the coming of the Messiah. It records their struggles and their victories, their doubts and their fears, their faith and their courage, their sinful fallenness and their boldness in overcoming their sinful nature, through their faith in God and more especially through their relationship with Jesus Christ. They and many, many, many more have walked the ancient path and are able to direct us in the way to go. Jeremiah then says, that once they have shown us the good way, we must walk in it. There is no suggestion that we give it a try and see if it works for us. It requires a full-blown faith and surrender to the ways of God, a complete commitment to walk in the ancient path and not to veer from it, regardless of what will come our way to distract or confuse us. The Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness just after the joy and wonder of his own baptism. In the wilderness, with nothing to sustain him, life and the full force of temptation hit him from every direction. He stood firm on the ancient path and overcame the temptations and walked away in victory, now ready and empowered to complete the task for which he was born. It is important to realize that the deceiver will do everything in his power to dissuade us from following the truth of the ancient paths, from embracing our victory through the work of the cross from obtaining our ultimate identity in our relationship with Jesus Christ, Son of God. Therefore, our commitment needs to be complete, without waver and with determination to keep on keeping on, regardless of the realities of life here in the midst of the wickedness of the world around us. In Philippians 2 verses 12 to 13, Paul writes, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
for it is God who works in you, both to will and to do, for his good pleasure. In our reverent awe of God, and in our working and determination to stay on the ancient path, God will work in us according to his will, and for his good pleasure, and in this we will find rest for our souls. What is meant by rest for your soul? Our bodies crave those moments of escape when they are exhausted, those moments when they can simply switch off to the world around them and regain energy and strength, those moments when the head can be put back and the eyes closed and consciousness forgotten for just a short while. In the same way our souls crave those moments too, our consciousness, our will, our personalities, ourselves, that which makes us function the way we do, the soul, it craves a break from having to strive. In Jesus and on the ancient path of the biblical forefathers, our souls can find rest and assurance and stop the unending battle to find fulfillment, for that fulfillment is found in Jesus Christ alone. His work on the cross brought completion to battle against the enemy of God and all he created. Once we turn to him for our salvation from the eternal consequences of our sin and from the striving to live life here on earth, then will our souls be able to rest. And in that rest, we will find the peace of God that passes all understanding. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask the way, ask where the good way is and walk, walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. Father God, I pray that those who are listening today who have already made that commitment to walk the ancient paths will have the boldness and courage to tell others about it and find rest for their souls. I pray also for those who are listening who have not yet turned to walk on the ancient paths that they will find the courage and boldness to overcome their fears and doubts and begin their journey along the ancient paths and find rest for their souls in your Son, Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come. Amen.